comes to you guys. If you're a ghost. If you're, if you're human, a ghost. it's like, yeah. it's not, that would be homicide. I came out with, to Nashville here to work with Seth on the shoot. It's, uh, it's been interesting. Food's good, as you can see. What's going on out there, though, it's a pretty big disappointment, actually. The ghost gets sucked up into it. Action! When we brought up the idea of doing a Ghostbusters-related film team experiment, ultimately what we landed on was this idea about a Ghostbuster on his day off. We knew he had a gym available, so the idea was he would be working out. Working out, working out, working out. <laughs> and then ghosts would show up. Filming some ghosts. And he would have to use a kind of suitcase version of a proton pack. Tell me about yeah. this uh, weapon here. Like Name is Rashad. <laughs> Our Ghostbuster was played by Rashad Thornton, who you may remember having his ass handed to him in Go Bag. Your membership is about ready to run out. And our gym manager was actually played by Red Giant CEO, Chad Becker. Hey, my name's Chad Becker. I came out here actually on a plane to fire Seth. I wanted to go personally. He gave me a role in this film today. And now I have to fire him when it's all done. Not easy. Fire and throw and up and down. So we went about trying to make kind of the Iron Man version of Ghostbusters, kind of the Ghostbusters to go. One of the most obvious examples of this is our version of the Ghostbusters trap, which we turned into a magnetic puck. It's just a puck light you'd buy at Home Depot with green tape and red markers to help with the tracking and post. For the aperture doors, I remembered a tutorial Andrew Kramer did at Video Copilot a few years ago where he built and animated an aperture in Element 3D. I colored the doors in a pattern to mimic the yellow and black doors on the original Ghostbusters trap. I tracked that into the shot, animated an opening. Then using a solid and a mask, I put a white background behind the doors, which hid the green, but also gave me a layer to apply trap code shine to create stylized light rays coming out of the puck. The most recent version of Shine also comes with a built-in fractal noise option, which is super handy. I layered up two instances of Shine just to blow out the light and add some extra chaos. The next step is to add all the little flourishes that bring shots like this to life, like lightning and a powder hit from Action Essentials. And then because it's a visual effects shot, I added a flare uh, using No Light Factory. Now the other thing about the shot is that our plate just opens with the puck already on the wall, but I want to see it fly in and get stuck in the shot. So I paint out the puck in the first few several frames just using a freeze frame and a mask. Then I do a super dirty mask and animation of the puck to show it flying in and sticking before fading into the original puck over a couple frames. Lastly, I add a camera shake for the final flourish and Viola, it is finished. Speaking of finished, let's talk about ghosts. As you probably surmised, the original plate contained zero ghosts. Now, while I was originally hoping to actually commission some original puppets that we would shoot on black backdrops with high key lighting to recreate the feel of the ghosts in the original film, it turns out I'm not actually made of money. So we had to get creative. We started with photos of ourselves standing in sort of a touchdown T-pose. Rampant Design has this really cool product called the Monster Toolkit. It's basically this huge library of Photoshop files of teeth, eyes, eye sockets, horns, skin textures, etc. for creating monster makeup effects and posts. So using the Monster Toolkit, I was able to turn myself from this to this. That Seth Ghost went on to be the Slime Ghost in the final piece, and the Weight Ghost was actually built from the masculine physique of one Arn Rabinowitz. Once inside After Effects, I went to work adding small elements of nuance using keyframes and wiggle expressions to animate jaw movement, head movement, and our friend Brian Beam at Rooster Teeth actually recommended a great trick of using optics compensation to simulate some subtle 3D warping and movement on the face. Next, I use this amazing script from aescripts.com called Puppet Tools, which lets you easily control puppet pinpoints with nulls, among other really great features. Puppet Tools made the experience of animating these ghosts a million times lighter and freer, allowing me to tinker with it until landing on something that felt natural and real. That's right, even more natural and real than real ghosts. So then it was time to composite this dude. I gave him some intense contrast with the curves adjustment, then colored him up with Video Copilot's free Color Vibrance plugin. This was now my core ghost layer. Next, I duplicated him and cleared the adjustments on the duplicate, so I could use it to create my glow effects. Started with a really intense fast blur, then I used an effect from Red Giant Universe called Heat Wave, which turned my ghost blur into a mystical, spiritual, flowy blob. Then I added Color Vibrance, then I duplicated the layer a few times to brighten it up and make it more intense, then I blended everything together with a screen blend mode. This time I didn't add just one flare, but two this was an element I loved about the Scolari Brothers shots that ILM created for Ghostbusters 2. Finally, I threw together a good enough looking barbell and element and parented it to the nulls that Puppet Tools had created for the ghost's hands, so that way the weight stayed in its hands. Finally, we needed to create some proton streams. 
I'm a firm believer that your visual effects work always starts on set. A major element that sold all the Proton Stream shots was a blue light that we blasted Rashad with from off screen to simulate light from the streams. Then in post, to create the streams, Arn Rabinowitz came up with a really killer approach to this, using Trapcode DAO and an AE script called Mask Avenger. Mask Avenger lets you control mask vertices individually, parenting them to nulls, even adjust them in 3D space. And since Trapcode DAO lets you generate 3D geometry along a path, and you can use a layer's path or mask to do that, you can team up DAO and Mask Avenger to do some really powerful stuff, such as creating proton streams. We started with a yellow core, gave it some glow, then we duplicated it and adjusted the second stream to be thinner, made it blue, and made it taper on both ends. Then we used Dow's built-in fractal controls to turn the thing into lightning, gave it some glow, then we created a second blue lightning stream with a slightly different fractal amount to separate it from the first. Then just to make it look a little more dangerous, I added heat wave, because I love danger, and heat, and waves. Then I created some smoky glow using the same blur and heat wave process I used on the ghosts. Then I used Trapco Particular to generate sparks coming off the streams, to give it even more danger, because I just love danger. Particular now has a ridiculously cool effects builder that lets you browse presets and customize your emitters with a live preview. So I took the existing weld gold preset and modified the physics and velocity to create the effect I wanted. I added a flare to the gun, then I used solids, masks, and wiggle opacity expressions to simulate some light flashery business. Then I added the ghost, glowed him up, lit him up, and tied him up. Lastly, I want to highlight two additional resources that were indispensable on this project. The first one you may remember us using way back on our short plot device. So when it came to actually blow up an alien, I thought we should do it as humanely as possible. Get off my lawn. And by that I mean throwing Axe body wash all over my brother. That's really gross. These are some handsome smelling ghosts. Because they, they secrete Axe body wash. The second is a plugin called Point Zoom from Red Giant Universe. Point Zoom is almost like a reverse version of Trap Code Shine. Think, help me, Obi Wan Kenobi, you're my only hope. Applying Point Zoom helped us create the effect of the ghost being sucked into the trap, and like any good tool, made trapping ghosts look super easy. 